Forget the future of Smash. After winning both of Japan's biggest Golden Week majors this past week, My Suma Top 7 and Kageribi 7, the young Steve Akala is the hottest name in Smash Ultimate right now. With wins over titans of Japanese Smash Ultimate like Shutong, T, Gact, and Rea, Akala amassed a resume in just one week that most players couldn't hope to compile in an entire lifetime. Akala was far from the only player to pop off over the course of Japan's Golden Week. For more on Ashimo, Fuwa, Lax, and the rest of the players who made huge bracket runs in Japan last week, check out our recap of the biggest week of Japanese Smash Ultimate since lockdown. But with his two wins at Maisuma and Kageribi, nobody is making moves in Japan like Akala. We dove into his bracket matches this week to answer the question, what makes Akala's Steve so strong? Steve players have already been on the rise in the United States. Yanni made waves at Riptide, placing 9th with a win over DeBuzz, and recently returned to the ranks of Super Major Top 16s with his 13th place finish at Genesis 7. Jake went off at Glitch Infinite, defeating Gact, Light, Cola, and DeBuzz en route to 3rd place, the first Top 8 finish for a North American Steve player in a Major. Back in February, we went on a deep dive into Jake's performance at Glitch Infinite. You should really watch the whole thing, but the gist of it is pretty simple. Jake mined. A lot. He mined for diamond early and often, picking up an average of over 3 diamonds per game and pulling his first diamond within the first 50 seconds of the game on average. With diamond in hand for the entirety of his final two stocks in most cases, Jake was able to ride the absurd 1.35 times damage granted by diamond tools to huge momentum, snowballing big leads or making shocking comebacks. Surely, Akala used a similar strategy right? Well, not really. Akula and Jake show strikingly different mining patterns, which is to say, in the vast majority of cases, Akula is much slower to his first diamond. Jake gets to his first diamond by 47 seconds into the game on average. For Akula, that number jumps to a whopping 72 seconds, 25 later than Jake's average first diamond. In every single game except the third game against Cola, Jake mined at least one diamond by that 72 second mark. Three times he had already mined two diamonds. Flipping the script, Akala mined his first diamond by Jake's average mark of 47 seconds just eight times in 38 games, a 21% rate. Because Akala played Gact, we're lucky enough to have a point of comparison with not just one, but two American Steve players, as Gact played against both Jake and D Dog at Glitch Infinite falling to Jake 3-0, but beating D-Dog 3-0. Against Akala, Gak jumped out to a 2-0 lead, but Akala was able to pull the reverse 3-0. Let's take a look at the diamond data against Ness only. Jake pulled 8 diamonds in 3 games, 2.67 per game compared to exactly 2 diamonds per game for D-Dog and Akala, and, as the full data showed, was getting them faster. Jake pulled 7 of his 8 diamonds by the 105 second mark. Both D-Dog and Akala had only pulled half of their diamonds by the same time. So this clearly isn't the defining factor. Despite the fact that Akala's diamond pull rates were nearly identical to D-Dog's, he was able to win the set over Gact, where D-Dog instead held a 3-0 loss. Why? How did Akala make up for his lack of diamonds? How did he make as much or more out of fewer resources than Jake? The setup we're about to show you is one of the biggest reasons why. Akala has built a 3 high pillar, so not only can't Ness productively jump over, he can't easily sneak aerial PK fires through either. As soon as Gact breaks the bottom block with PK fire, Akala springs into action. He slams a gold powered minecart just barely into the bottom of the second block, such that it lands with slow forward momentum to cover the ground in front of the pillar. The slowed down cart may look harmless, but by reducing its speed, Akala has successfully covered any retreat under the platform. At the very beginning of the clip, Akala's axe broke from mining, so he has no diamond axe for up tilt or up air pressure. Despite that, Gact is hiding in shield to avoid these threats. Instead, Akala goes for the charged up smash and catches Gact inside his shrinking shield, taking the stock. Let's move ahead to the winner's final set against Ashimo to see another way this setup threatens opponents. This time, Akala has a stone tower instead of wood, so the blocks will take more time or damage to break. 
Even though Akala gets hit as he chases the first minecart, he has forced Ashimo all the way back to the corner. After finding the downer out of hit stun, he's able to get the same setup, but this time with stage control. Ashimo is aware that the slowed down minecart will control the ground, so he goes high, but Akala is on level 2. He's already there, with the back air to take the stock. That back air is no small thing, either. We've all been hit by the pickaxe out of the minecart, but in that situation with Steve charging at you, it's usually a forward air. But with Ryu at 108, even a diamond forward air may not have secured the stock at that point. The diamond back air, though, that easily takes the stock. To do that, Akula is taking advantage of a technique usually called Phantom Block Reverse, or PBR. PBR gives Steve the absolutely broken option of turning around in the air. It sounds simple, but very few characters in the game have the ability to do that without actually using a move first. Those would be the characters with multiple double jumps, and the exchange for that boon is that their double jumps lack the fluidity of the rest of the roster. Steve? Well, because he's canceling his neutral special with the back air, Steve is able to turn around out of the minecart or any other aerial situation without inducing a ton of lag first. That's an incredible asset. Characters that can use wave bounce or B-reverse specials to change momentum in the air, even when that action requires committing to an entire move, can be very powerful. See Snake throwing the kitchen sink at you from the skies and changing direction with each explosive. See what charge shot characters can do by jump canceling their neutral specials. See Krom, Roy, and Sephiroth using their relatively non-committal side specials to set up for nasty edge guards. Even Wario can pull off some nasty baits by wave bouncing the animation when he tries to spawn a bike when one is already on stage. I just I didn't know you could you can reverse this? You can! You can be reverse! For many characters with powerful back airs, the trade-off is supposed to be that it's hard to launch yourself at the opponent with your back to them. Steve is a perfect example of this, in theory. His back air is both bigger and has far more KO potential, but when jumping out of minecart, your only real access to quick horizontal movement, you're usually forced to forward air to hit an opponent who's in front of you. PBR removes that restriction, allowing Steve access to that massive back air immediately out of the cart, making every minecart that that much scarier. But again, that's just one potential outcome of this minecart setup Akala used so well last week. Here it is earlier in the Kagadibi bracket against Reyes Greninja. The amount of stage control Akala was able to earn from one minecart here is staggering. Not only did he get huge damage from the minecart hits and the grab, but he also earned an edge guard opportunity and some free resources from the time to mine. And here's the kind of Looney Tunes nonsense that happens when Akala's opponent loses track of both the minecart speed and that block placement behind him. Final Destination was a common counterpick against Akala this past week, but he was often able to use setups like these to cover vast swaths of the stage. Punishes like these more than made up for the fact that Final Destination didn't allow Akala to camp under platforms as well as behind walls. Akala favored the three high pillar in another setup. For this one, Steve is at high percents and standing in front of, rather than behind, the pillar. Never was it more explosive than in game one against Jogibu at Mysuma Top 7. Oh, you hit Steve? No, no, that's just going to make him angry. Most grounded options, like Captain Falcon's Rapid Jab here, are laggy enough that Steve will have enough time to tech his wall and punish with a minecart. Here, Akala was able to follow that up with a fantastic setup he used multiple times against telegraphed linear recoveries like Falcon's. With the TNT at the ledge, and knowing that the opponent has to recover to that space, Akala simply triggers it with a getup attack, and uses the invincibility from that option to keep himself safe. He would use the same setup to great effect against Ashimo's Ryu in Grand Finals as well. Here's Akala using the tech setup to save himself and swiftly turn what should have been a stock loss into the end of the game. And it's not like his opponents don't know what's going on. Here's Yoshidora, faced with the same setup. He knows he can't hit Akala with a grounded option, even up smash, because Steve will be able to tech and punish. He knows he has to do a low lag aerial, like forward air or back air, which have the potential to combo off of spike or drag down hitboxes respectively. But Akala knows all of this too, and rather than anxiously minecarting out of the corner, he holds his ground until the inevitable. There is 
far more to talk about with Akala's game than just these two setups. He made tremendous use out of gold tools in some situations, crafting early when many Steves would have preferred to wait for diamond and utilize the gold for powered carts. He had intense success edgeguarding with Steve's vicious down smash and found ways to stuff recoveries with blocks as well. He had nasty hit confirms on deck, turning stray up tilts into KOs through up smash and bear, combos that require slick execution and strong reactions. And when he needs to, he's more than capable of playing the diamond hoarding style that defined Jake's run at Glitch. After his Donkey Kong was hastily dispatched by T and loser semis at my Suma Top 7, Akala was able to force a decisive Game 3 by defeating T's Kazuya with his Steve. Faced with the matchup he wanted to avoid the whole time, Steve versus Pac-Man, Akala mined like he never mined before. Akala mined three diamonds just six times in 38 games, which is 15.8%. Against T's Pac-Man in that decisive game three, Akala mined a whopping six diamonds, including three within the game's first two and a half minutes. Akala would hold diamond tools for most of the game. T nearly managed a big comeback, bringing it within the ever terrifying bell confirm range, but Akala held on and secured the game and set with a dash attack. And yes, it was Diamond. It's impossible to find a Steve player who's making more out of the extensive, seemingly endless toolkit the man from Minecraft brings to the table than Akala. He's now won all three open offline brackets he's entered, Sumabato SP24, MySuma Top 7, and Kagaribi 7. Throw in the 8-player MySuma offline number 2 invitational he won in April as well, and Akala's win streak sits at 4 events, all featuring some of Japan's best competition. After an utterly historic week, Akala sits atop the Japanese Smash Ultimate throne, having dispatched many of Japan's top players himself in the process. It would have been unthinkable just two months ago, but it seems fair to ask, is Akala Japan's current best Smash Ultimate player? Proto Bantam and Shutone have their overseas accomplishments, but as the favorites heading into this week's events, both fell well short of Akala. And what about Zachary? Will he be able to solve this enigmatic Steve upon his return from Pokemon? Pokemon Unite. The rest of 2022 is setting up to be a dramatic one for Japan's Smash Ultimate scene, as it is across the world. To keep up with everything you need to know from the international Smash scene, from one corner of the globe to the next, make sure you're subscribed to PG Stats. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you want more content like this, check out our website at pgstats.com and follow us for more information. I've been Kimona, and if you want to keep up with me, check me out on Twitter at ThatKimona. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you all next time.